discuss about in detail what is law of large numbers there are two different approach to describe law of large number one is weak law of large, large number another one is a strong law of large number and if you talk about proof of weak law of large number it is just implied from chebyshev inequality and uh, if you talk about uh, central limit theorem then we will discuss about central limit theorem so proof of central limit theorem uh, it might be a little bit tedious it need some more lemma in order to establish central limit theorem so what uh, what is more benefit of central limit theorem is that it is having a really interesting application in order to compute to or in order to estimate probability of, of any event despite of not knowing the distribution so that's why uh, central limit theorem it is just uh, what is happening uh, it it try to re relate any random sample to distribution of a standard normal random variable and with the help of that we can always compute the or we can always estimate the probability so here central limit theorem is uh, alternative way to estimate the probability of an event despite of not knowing the distribution so that's why it is very much uh, applicable just you need to know that normal table from the normal table you can easily estimate probability of any event with the help of central limit theorem so those problem also we will discuss so coming to outline of today's lecture first i would like to state law of large numbers and then i will talk about uh, very simplistic proof of uh, uh, weak law of large number how we can establish through convergence and probability that proof we will see and also we will talk about one uh, example there you will you will see that law of large number actually it is one uh, thanks to that probabilistic inequality it is coming and uh, we will talk about uh, one that low probability and high probability concept as well those what we had already discussed during all those probabilistic inequality basically in case of chernoff and uh, hofdin inequality what we had already discussed same same concept we will come here uh, more in more intuitive way to describe uh, various characterization of law of large number okay afterward we will discuss about central limit theorem and just here we will state and analyze central limit theorem what does it talk about and why it is beneficial and what are the applications and in the last segment of this lecture if time permit then we will see to uh, various application of central limit theorem in order to estimate probability of an event okay so all these are part of today's lecture so coming to first that law of large number what does it talk about so simply uh, always when we discuss about uh, uh, distribution with unknown a uh, random variable with unknown distribution so uh, we need to come up with some kind of random sample uh, once we are having a random sample then we can define various uh, uh, sample statistics so uh, like sample mean sample variance sample uh, proportion sample uh, median various con concept would be there okay so so from the given random sample we can define all those things. so but uh, what is happening that only two sample uh, statistics happen to be very useful one is sample mean and another one is sample variance so we will talk about from the sample uh, uh, estimation of sample uh, mean uh, mean mean of uh, actual mean uh, true mean with the help of sample mean so here in that uh, perspective we need to discuss about convergence of uh, sample mean to true mean so how that converts so that converge, convergence is described by law of large number so here suppose we are having a random sample of size n that means x1 x2 uh, up to xn and these are actually id this uh, id these are forming id random sample of size n or simply you can also say that you are just observing n observations from unknown distribution of random variable x that means x is the random variable whose distribution is not known to us okay and x is having mean mu and uh, various sigma square these two if we don't know the distribution that means we also don't know the mean and variance of the corresponding random variable so that we need to estimate it then uh, before uh, going to estimate it we need to talk about convergence that we have to talk about uh, from the asymptotic assum asymptotic perspective what uh, uh, that means uh, with respect to uh, sample size when sample size is uh, we know that if sample size if you keep on increasing then definitely from inside out approach uh, the sample will try to uh, estimate the population from inside out approach what we call it uh, so if you are trying to increase the sample size so it is one kind of asymptotic approach what we are calling it okay so uh, the law of large number it says that the mean of a large sample if you are taking a large sample that means when sample size happens to be very large then mean of a large sample is 
close to the mean of the distribution that means uh, what uh, what actual distribution it would be then mean of the large sample would be very close to the mean of distribution that is the that we say that the, the distribution of uh, sample mean it becomes more uh, concentrated around its mean as n goes to large that when n goes to infinity then simply we see that uh, that uh, Sample mean it just uh, focus much around the true mean. It is just concentrated around the true mean. That is the perspective of large uh, law of large number. So okay. So first we will discuss about what is the weak law of large number. Okay. So this convergence is little bit weaker sense. So it says that if you are having a sample mean x n uh, from a given random sample of size n, then uh, it is just okay so this uh, sample man uh, sample mean it is uh, it is just uh, defined from the random sample of size n then for e, for any epsilon greater than 0 we can find probability of uh, uh, right tail or left tail in together so we can easily find from chebyshev inequality this uh, bound for this probability that probabilistic bound for uh, th this probability bound usually we can say that from Chebyshev inequality we can see this one we had already seen that what is the probability that uh, uh, that the modulus of uh, uh, sample mean or simply you can say that what is the probability that uh, sample mean is epsilon away from the true mean so the upper bound it is given by uh, ratio of the variance of sample mean divided by sigma square so here actually variance it is coming just uh, we know that Chebyshev inequality it is implied from Markov inequality that's why in uh, just uh, you need to replace that in Markov inequality the random variable x by uh, this random variable the modulus of uh, sample mean uh, minus mu so then you will easily get Chebyshev inequality so this is just uh, Chebyshev inequality what uh, we would like to say and we know uh, this uh, variance of sample mean it happens to be sigma square by n and this uh, epsilon square it is directly coming from Chebyshev inequality and we can see that in denominator n is there if you take limit of this uh, bound when n is approaching to infinity then this upper bound here this upper bound it will approach to zero so easily we can see that uh, uh, simply we can see that uh, with very low probability uh, with very low probability when n is very large with very low probability this sample mean is epsilon away from mu that means uh, mostly uh, the sample mean happens to be within epsilon distance of uh, the true mean mu okay so that i would like to say that so th that's where there is an equivalent uh, uh, notation of the weak law of large number it says that uh, with very high probability so simply when n is very large then simply uh, here it, it equality would be not there in place of that we will have 1 minus delta you can say that so this 1 minus delta happens to be very high probability so we simply say that uh, when uh, sample size sample size is very large then we simply we can say that with very high probability the sample mean would be uh, within epsilon distance of true mean so that it says the, uh, the weak law of large number so and in, in limiting form when you take uh, n tends to infinity this delta will approach to zero and hence it becomes equal to one so this delta would be function of n you can say that uh, function of one by n you can say that a uh, one by a square root of n so reciprocal would come here so when n is approaching to infinity then this delta would approach to zero and hence we say that limiting value of this property is equal to one and hence we say that xn is concentrated near to true mean okay so sample mean or whatever sample you will take so it would fall within epsilon distance of true mean so that it says weak law of large number then then there is a stronger version of law of large number that we are saying that a strong law of large, large number so what does it say that if you are taking a sample mean from this uh, same random sample of size n and uh, then for any epsilon we can say that this sample mean will converge to the sample mean uh, will will convert to true mean uh, in almost sure way so this convergence is talking about almost sure way equality you can define define almost sure way like this way so these two are so this weak law of large number is directly established with the help of uh, convergence in probability and a strong law of large number can be established with the help of convergence in almost sure way so both convergence are very much uh, simple you can see it like this way so i will talk about one 
interesting example for that one is directly coming from Bernoulli random variable and how we see that Bernoulli random variable it is talking in the sense that uh, people are saying that uh, if you are having a bias point then uh, uh, oh, sorry unbiased point then what is happening that probability of getting head and or probability of getting tail both would be 0 0.5 but uh, if you try to establish that through observation then uh, what is happening that uh, uh, if you are getting uh, uh, various observations so in that uh, in total if you try to compute sample mean that would be equal to 0.5 so that you have to verify so how we see verification so here we will talk about from the large sample perspective okay large number perspective so suppose each xi is an independent flaw uh, flip of a fair coin so simply if you flip a coin once at a time then uh, the corresponding random variable which is associated with that uh, trial we will call it Bernoulli random variable we know that Bernoulli random variable is having two, only two uh, uh, two outcome either head or tail or one or zero depends upon what uh, what kind of numeric you want to associate with a Bernoulli random variable so simply with respect to each uh, toss of a coin uh, or each flip of a coin, we uh, uh, associated random variable would be a Bernoulli random variable with parameter 0 0.5. Suppose it is a unbiased coin. Okay, so easily we can compute uh, mean of that uh, Bernoulli random variable. What would be that 0 0.5? Okay, mean easily we can also we can compute variance. It would be p into 1 minus p. That would be 0 0.5 into 0 0.5. That means 0 0.25. Okay, so all these uh, things are coming to us now. Let us. Uh, discuss about uh, uh, sample mean suppose we are having n number of observation n number of uh, trial trial then we have to come up with sample mean x n it, it is talking about proportion of the head in uh, n flip so in n flip flip so here simply x n you can talk about uh, it is talking about sample mean and also you can define in term of some of the uh, those xi's up in n trial divided by n so this sn is what it is binomial in nature you can talk about so what are the possible value x and binomial random variable so what are the possible value sn is taken by it would take value uh, from 0 to n any value from 0 to 1 okay so uh, here sample mean is defined like this way so simply we say that uh, if you talk about uh, this sample mean you can relate it by this way it is one kind of empirical approach to compute or to estimate probability of success okay so k by n is coming k by n is the sample mean k may take any value between 0 to n okay so then we expect that this proportion so simply you can easily say that this one is a proportion k would be always less than equal to n so that's why it is talking about it is a quantity between 0 to 1 so it is a one kind of proportion one proportion always observing value between 0 to 1 so now our intention is that if our coin is fair then we try to claim that this proportion would come very close to 0 0.5 when n is very large okay when n is large then k by n it would uh, be very close to 0 0.5 thanks to that law of large number what does it say okay so here oh, randomness being what what is the randomness this is not guaranteed here uh, okay for example we could get 100 heads in 100 flips it is also possible that uh, if you are uh, observing n number 100 number of uh, thousand sorry thousand number of uh, trials or thousand number of observation in thousand also it may possible that uh, uh, you will get thousand times head always uh, you will get so thousand of that may also possible but remember that uh, that occurrence of this uh, uh, thousand heads in thousand flip or thousand uh, observation it is a very rare chance why because uh, each observation would be each outcome would be equally likely so probability of this one would be one by thousand that one by thousand happens to be very small okay so th that's why it is uh, this quantity it occurs with probability very with very 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 low low probability what we say that okay so our intuition in translated to uh, what it so with high probability the sample mean xn uh, x bar n it is very close to 0 0.5 for large n simply we say that because this one is very rare chance that it will occur if it occurs it occurs very uh, rarely that means probability is very small then what does it say that that means this sample mean it will be very close to 0 0.5 
with high probability we are not saying that probability with probability 1 uh, this sample mean is equal to 0.5 just we are saying that with very high probability this sample mean is very close to 0.5 that is the ultimate uh, intuition of uh, log large number so now we will look at the probability of being 0.5 so what just we are doing uh, we are coming with some kind of uh, uh, accuracy okay epsilon value of epsilon so 0 0.5 it would be some somewhere here so from 0 0.5 we we try to observe that uh, suppose we are taking epsilon this is 0 0.1 we are taking epsilon okay so uh, here uh, what would be mu plus epsilon it would be a 0.6 and this one is the right shift and the left shift would be uh, mu minus epsilon it would be 0.4 so what is the probability that we have to uh, compute the probability what is the probability that uh, this sample mean xn is within this epsilon distance of 0.5 okay true 0.5 is the true uh, mean of the Bernoulli random variable okay true mean it happens to be but here we are trying to approximate this one through the sampling random sample so we come up with one accuracy this you can call it accuracy okay so what is the probability uh, what would be the probability that xn would be within this so that we, we want to compute so how many trials we have to compute it so let us see the various number of trials okay so uh, simply uh, it is equivalent to say that uh, that uh, sample mean is within epsilon or uh, that is epsilon equal to 0 0.5 uh, 0 0.1 uh, epsilon equal to 0 0.1 distance of mu or 0 0.5 okay so if you simplify it so it would take this form okay action that a sample mean is taking value between point we have to compute the pro we estimate the probability that a sample mean falls between 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 that means accuracy you are taking 0 0.1 okay and if you further simplify then we know that xn is what it is the ratio of sn and n so just you can substitute it back like this way why we are substituting it back like this way we know that xn is what xi is our Bernoulli random variable and sn is talking about sum of n number of Bernoulli random variables so n so sn would be what it would be a binomial random variable so we know the explicit form of distribution of binomial random variable so that's why we are converting like this way okay so it is a binomial random variable so in term of uh, if we know binomial random variable that we also know a community distribution function of binomial random variable so this is the difference of community distribution function of binomial random variable that uh, this through this way we can compute this uh, desired probability what we are willing to see that uh, concentration of sample mean within true mean okay so let us take various trial okay so first if you take trial that number of trials 10 or number of observation 10 then in that case what would be the possible estimate of uh, this probability if you are taking n equal to uh, 10 then what would be this probability this probability equal to the 0.4 times 10 less than equal to sn and sn is less than equal to 0.6 times 10 so if you simplify this uh, expression you are getting and you can compute this probability easily using that uh, uh, distri community distribution function of binomial distribution okay and uh, that would be what 0.656 uh, okay now if you raise the number of generation to 50 then uh, this uh, probability for the same epsilon 0.1 it would be what it would be equal to 0.1 so you can see that if you are increasing the sample size your probability uh, of concentration that uh, sample mean is within epsilon distance of 0.5 it is increasing you can easily see that uh, more concentration towards true mean okay more probability is increasing likewise if you take uh, probability uh, a number of observation or number of trials 100 then in that case what is the pro probability of concentration you can say that it is probability of concentration with uh, epsilon 0.1 okay so in that case probability of concentration is become 0.96 okay if you increase further the sample size if you are taking 500 sample size that 500 observation then in that case what is the probability it is 0.99 it is very near to one if you further increase the sample size that means you are taking n number of thousand number of observation then you observe that uh, probability is equal to one so that with probability one uh, the sample mean falls within 0.1 distance of 0.5 0.1 distance of true mean 0.5 so that is that so here this is the uh, 
situation what we see that if you increase the sample size or if you increase the now observation with high probability uh, your sample mean falls within epsilon distance of true mean that is the ultimate meaning of large number law of large number okay now we are going to discuss further next concept that regarding central limit theorem what does it talk about so this central limit theorem it is based on a stochastic convergence uh, uh, like convergence in distribution so that uh, perspective is coming here so law like law of, of large number it was uh, depends uh, it was implied from uh, convergence in probability in the similar fashion central limit theorem it uh, implies from convergence in distribution so that we will see it here first we need to state what is the uh, central limit theorem okay so it says that further if you are having a random sample of size n okay uh, or simply you can say that there are n observation of the random variable x whose distribution is unknown to uh, us we know mean of uh, true mean of that random variable it would be mu and variance would be sigma square but we are unable to compute those why because we don't know the distribution so that's why mu and sigma square both are known to us unless it is given to us okay so central limit theorem it says that if you are if we x x bar n it happens to be sample mean of the corresponding random sample of size n or sample of size n then we can uh, strike the sample mean as a, a standard a strike sample mean how we strike it first you need to deviate the uh, sample mean by corresponding mean of the sample mean we know that uh, what is the mean of sample mean we had already seen that it happens to be uh, true mean of the random variable it is equal to uh, true mean of the random variable and what is the variance of uh, sample mean it is equal to uh, true variance divided by uh, n so both thing we had already seen that this computation we had already done it okay it is sigma square by n okay any question till now anyone is Sunny, do you have any question? Okay. Then fine, I am going forward. I expect you should have question. I would be happy if you are asking question. So here, uh, sam sample mean is having various mu and uh, expectation mu and variance sigma square by n okay so we are having all this idea from sample statistics okay so here uh, from the sample mean uh, we deviated this sample mean by mean of the sample mean that happens to be true mean okay and after that we divide it by uh, a standard deviation of the sample mean so variance of sample mean is sigma square by n and we know that uh, a standard deviation happens to be a square root of the variance so here from here we will get a, a standard deviation of sample mean uh, you can denote it by sigma x bar it is equal to sigma a square root of this one is sigma uh, sigma by a square root of n okay so so this uh, asterisk form we are calling it it is asterisk sample mean okay there is another way to get a strike sample mean how so uh, by deviating this sum of the these random variable that we are getting from the random sample of size n uh, by uh, deviate it first by mean of the mean of the sn mean of sn it would be again we had already seen that mean of sn it, it is equal to uh, n times true mean but just here you rely on that mu is unknown to us okay so that we know that also we know that uh, uh, what is the variance variance of sn it happens to be n time sigma square n times sigma square so this sigma it would be out of uh, square root okay so you can write it 
left hand side sigma times a square root of n you can like this so simply both are representing uh, standardized uh, sample mean okay so here central limit theorem says that a standardized sample mean zn it is converging to a standard normal random variable z in distribution so if you are willing to write in the uh, stochastic converted perspective you can say that uh, so how we denote uh, uh, Cumulative distribution function of Zn, so we can denote it in this uh, cumulative distribution function of Zn like this way. Uh, we can denote it by Zn is a sequence of random variables. It depends upon n is coming as a sample size. So we define it how we define it that probability that Zn is observing value up to Z. Okay, up to Z. So this is the uh, commodity distribution function of Zn. Likewise, phi Z, what does it talk about? It is talking about commodity distribution function of a standard normal random variable. So if you take limiting value of this over this uh, uh, community distribution function of Zn, then limiting value of this one when n is approaching to infinity, the this uh, distribution function it will approach to distribution function of Z. So this we are calling it convergence in distribution. This one is convergence in distribution. Simply you can write say that uh, here uh, f f of x n it is converging to phi in distribution. Or simply you can say that also you can say that when n tends to infinity you can say it, its convergence is in term of asymptotic this one is asymptotic convergence here that means equivalent to say that this is equivalent to say that Zn is converging to Z in distribution this one is the equivalent representation more explicitly we have written written like this way and if you further uh, elaborate you are willing to see from practical sense then uh, you can uh, talk uh, like this way uh, uh, talk in sense of probability that means if zn is observing value between a to b and if you take limit n tends to infinity then this one implies that uh, the probability simply we don't know the distribution of uh, x so we simply also we don't know the exact distribution of zn but if you are taking sample size very large, very, very large, when n is approached to infinity, then this unknown probability, it can be computed as the difference of uh, the value of uh, uh, CDF of uh, a standard normal random variable that uh, phi of b minus phi of a. So easily compute uh, uh, value of uh, CDF at b, at b. Usually we can get it from normal table if you because a and b would be given to you also compute value of, of cdf of z at a and take the difference of these two then you will get the, it will the difference will give desire this desired probability when sample size is very large okay when remember that when sample size is very large then we will try to estimate this uh, probability by this difference okay and this value we can easily compute it from uh, we can uh, get it from the normal table so we can get it so that's why don't worry about the actual distribution of zn or don't worry about the actual distribution of x zn is always it is what it is zn is directly coming from x or xn it is a random sample of x okay so we know i don't know the actual distribution of zn but in uh, uh, convergence in distribution it is converging to uh, cdf of z that a standard normal, normal random variable so that is the beauty of this central limit theorem says okay so we have the following observation uh, under the central limit theorem what are those it says that the sample mean is approximately a normal distribution with the same mean what x is having but a smaller variance variance is a small why variance is coming sigma square by n so always it would be uh, reduced it would be reduced so that is the uh, here zn is having approximate normal distribution and hence we can say that xn is having approximate normal distribution 
it is not exactly normal distribution uh, approximate normal distribution so also we can say that uh, xn is having the distribution of x, xn is happens to be simple mean so, so the corresponding distribution of uh, x bar n okay x bar is simple mean so x bar n the corresponding distribution of x bar n we will call it sampling distribution so sampling distribution of sample mean it would be uh, approximately a normal distribution okay and what is the mean and variance you know that it is already mentioned here further this sample mean uh, sample sum if you define sn you can simply call it sum this sn you call it sum or you also you can call it sample sum why because it is coming from the sample of size n so that's where the sample n is also approximately normal in nature from this uh, transformation you can easily see that you have already seen that zn is as approximately normal a standard normal zn is a standard normal approximately a standard normal that means when n is very large then we say that distribution of zn is uh, same what what is the distribution of a standard normal random variable so that's way from this uh, transformation we can say that the sample sum is also approximately normal okay now third uh, we talk about a summarized sample um, mean zn as uh, through this distribution we say that again it is having approximately a standard normal distribution zn is, uh, that's why I, I have taken notation zn okay zn what does it mean when n is very large zn is very much similar to a standard normal random variable all these are observation of central limit theorem what we talk about so we will take few example in order to understand uh, better perspective of central limit theorem so here central limit theorem first we will talk about uh, for Bernoulli distribution whose uh, uh, mean parameter is unknown to us we know that uh, uh, if you are having a Bernoulli random variable then mean of Bernoulli random variable is equal to true mean of Bernoulli random variable is equal to probability of success and the variance happens to be that sigma square happens to be product of probability of success and probability of failure and that means p into 1 minus p we know from the distribution segment we had already derived all these results okay so so that's where your parameter is unknown what does it imply it simply implies that we don't know oh, what are the mean and what is the mean and what is the variance we don't know okay so with the help of central limit theorem we are trying to uh, estimate this value okay so in order to estimate what we have to do we have to perform the uh, sampling okay we have to perform the sampling uh, from the distribution of x so, so we come come up with a random sample of size n x1 x2 up to xn or so you can simply say that uh, uh, you are taking n observation from the uh, Bernoulli random variable whose distribution is unknown to us why because that means p is unknown to us we don't know the p what is what would be p okay so we know from the derivation of uh, um, mean and variance of a uh, Bernoulli random variable mean would be p and variance would be p2 times 1 minus p so that that we know from the distribution segment okay so that is the situation so now what what is happening that we are having random sample of size n our at our hand so from that we try to come up with the summarized sample mean so directly first you need to define sample mean then you can come up with a summarized sample mean so we had already seen that sample mean a summarized sample mean is directly coming from sample mean so we try to get direct representation of some summarized sample mean like this way okay so here what is sn sn is actually sample sum and that means sum up uh, x i up to n so x1 plus up to xn so we know that each x i happens to be a binomial random variable with the parameter p that happens to be unknown to us so sn would be a binomial random variable with uh, parameter n and p and p is unknown to us okay and further it will imply what it will imply from central limit theorem what does it imply it implies that uh, the distribution of uh, zn it will converge to distribution of a standard normal random variable distribution of z1 so for, uh, this one is directly coming from central limit theorem what does it say it says that uh, z and that asterisk normal random variable asterisk sample mean it is converging to z a standard normal random variable in distribution so in more legitimate way we are writing this convergence is defined by this way okay this limit perspective so we we had already seen in central limit theorem so what is happening that we will take various uh, sample of different different size so if you are taking a sample of size one then this is the situation this is the situation okay this is the uh, situation easily 
Z1 would be what? A standardized, a standardized sample means it would be X1. We are taking a sample of size 1. Okay. So that means X1. So it is not a good uh, measure uh, estimate. It will not give a good estimate. So Z1 is X1 minus P divided by a square root of uh, variance. That happens to be P into 1 minus P. So that's where this quantity Z1 is coming. So easily we can see that uh, this is the uh, Z1. This is the distribution of Z1. So it is not no more actually we don't know actual thing here from here directly we can't say uh, just we have taken uh, histogram plot of uh, protein mass function of uh, protein mass function of Z1. So this is situation. Okay. If you so if you increase uh, sample size, you, if you are taking two uh, sample size is two n equal to two, then Z2 the asteroid sample mean it is coming like this way. This is the asteroid sample mean. So it is little bit uh, you can observe that. Uh, uh, one probability is coming here another probability is coming here okay but true one is this one this is the the black one is the true one we don't know that value we don't know so these uh, these probability are not matching with any of these two are not matching with this so we have to keep in we have to keep uh, increasing the sample size so if you keep on increasing so here if you are taking uh, a random sample of size 3 then this, this is the situation again uh, it is very much uh, not symmetric again we can't say much about uh, what is the this is the sampling distribution of uh, um, sample you can say that z3 is again a sliced sample mean so this is the sampling distribution of z3 protein mass function of z3 so again it doesn't look good so we can't infer anything about this one okay so if you go sample size more than 30 or 30 then what picture you got what is the uh, sampling distribution of Z3 or sampling distribution of a slice sample mean. So you can see that uh, here it is very much uh, uh, looks uh, normal in nature. You can easily see that if you just uh, uh, join all these height, then you will see that it looks very much normal in nature. So easily we can say that uh, this Z3 is, uh, is having a uh, distribution which is very much uh, near to distribution of a standard normal random variable. So that is the perspective of central limit theorem. If you keep on increasing sample size, then uh, this sampling distribution of uh, standardized uh, sample mean it would be very near to where very near to a standard normal random variable. This point you can say that it is zero here. This point is zero. This point is zero. This point is zero. Symmetric about zero. So symmetric. Z is always symmetric about zero so that's where so z3 is very much near to z okay very much near approximately so so convergence it happens in distribution you talk about uh, always in perspective of distribution okay so further i will take uh, another uh, uh, random variable cuneiform uh, random variable whose distribution is unknown to us again we don't know what would be the distribution of this one generally uniform random variable is taking value from an interval in uniform fashion or equally likely fashion. So here we don't know a, a b. Okay, a b might be parameter. We know that if you are having a uniform random variable which is observing value from this interval a b in a uniform uh, law or uniform principle, then easily we can compute uh, mean of the corresponding uniform random variable. It would be what? It would be the midpoint of the interval. That means a plus b by 2 we know from the distribution segment we know that derivation also we know the variance variance of this uh, uniform random variable but remember that here a and b are unknown to us we don't know that those two value so variance is what it is a, a square of difference between the these two terminal points b that means uh, whole square of b minus a divided by 12 this is the variance if you know a and b but we we don't know here a and b we don't know the parameter we don't know mu we don't know variance so with the help of central limit theorem we try to come up with uh, uh, sampling distribution of z and simply i would like to say that okay so suppose uh, we are taking a random variable uh, which is happens to be unknown to us okay Who's, Simply we say that uh, uh, we are taking a random sample of size n of an uniform random variable just from the, uh, uh, just uh, we will see the sampling distribution of Zn. So we are taking a random sample of size n uh, from uni uniform random variable x size which is observing value between 0 to 1. We know that uh, it is uniform, easily we can come up with distribution. Okay. So and hence uh, what would be mean of this one, it would be 0.5 and variance would be uh, 
1 by 12. So we can easily compute this one. So let us see the nature of asterisk sample mean. So what is the asterisk sample mean? So asterisk sample mean it would be Zn. Uh, that that is the uh, different. Uh, we can from the sample mean we can deviate sample mean by true mean and divide by sigma by uh, a, a square root of n. Okay. Remember that just right now forget about these things. We simply say that we don't know all these. We don't know all this. Okay. So here, uh, sum of uh, uh, sum of uh, n number of uh, uh, uniform random variable. If you are taking, so it is having a very interesting kind of distribution. Easily you can get it from that uh, uh, sum of two random variables. from the that uh, what we had already discussed about uh, uh, convolution, that continuous convolution. From there you can derive the distribution easily. First, you derive the distribution for x1 plus x2 uh, for uh, exercise purpose. Okay, and once you are having call it, uh, uh, once you are having this one, call it uh, Z or give another name. You can call it Z1. Then sum it up further with uh, x3. Then you will get distribution distribution for Z2 or better call it W. Z we have already booked for a standardized sample mean. So call it W. W1, W2, like the, that concept. So from that segment, easily you can derive the distribution of SN. So that is always feasible. Okay. So by using central limit theorem, you can say that uh, this ZN, the standardized sample mean, it is converging to uh, a standard normal random variable Z. So simply we can say that ZN is converging to a standard normal random random variable z. So what would be the uh, sampling distribution of zn? Definitely zn is what? Uh, it is coming from the random sample. So uh, we will have sampling distribution of z1 despite of no any information about the uh, any idea of this uh, random variable x which might which might be coming from uniform distribution but right now we just forget about that okay so zn is having a sampling distribution and what would be that that would be approximately uh, approximately normal so same situation is coming like this way so if you are taking a sample size equal to one if you are taking sample size equal to one so it is what uh, uh, it is simply what is the distribution of z1 it is just uh, what x1 is having x1 is what it is uniform distribution it is having uniform distribution and how it is defined it is defined over interval 0 to 1 and uh, z1 is what it is just centered uh, around the sample mean so that's where just you are playing with the change of origin so you apply here change of origin by center so that's where this point would be zero you can call it centered around zero so this is the distribution of z1 or this is the probability density function of z1 now you take sample size 2 that means uh, and uh, if you are taking sample size 2 then you come up with uh, this asterisk sample mean of z2 asterisk sample mean z2 and what is the distribution of z2 it would be triangle shape simply sum up to a standard uh, sum up to uniform distribution always uh, having a pdf which is triangle in nature that you can get it uh, from the convolution if you apply the convolution you will get it here to that okay so here it is just uh, again this point would be zero centered around zero so you can keep on incre increase the increasing the sample size if you are taking sample size three then this is the situation it is more or smoother you can say that uh, there is a kink at uh, Oh, the center okay king here it is not differentiable at uh, center okay king that we are saying that if you are increasing the sample size a uh, little bit more or smoother this one is more or smoother and if you keep on increasing the sample size if you go up to 30 then you can see that it is very much uh, near to or uh, the pdf of a standard normal random variable very much near so you can see that it is more a smoother version so we are getting more a smoother version if you keep on increasing the sample size it just becomes a pdf of a standard normal random variable so that is the application or that is the beauty of central limit theorem what we call it for uniform distribution we can see that we don't need to know the distribution of actual random variable just uh, you come up with uh, uh, a random sample and uh, from there what you do you come up with sampling distribution of the uh, sample mean or a standardized sample mean or sample sum so whatever that so uh, why we are going to with uh, a standardized sample mean because we know that a standardized sample mean is having mean 0 and variance 1 so that's why we don't need to compute further sample uh, mean and variance so that's why it is easy to proceed with that so that's why we need to first uh, estimate the sampling distribution of zn 
okay so do we have time okay in probably in next class uh, we will discuss about application of central limit theorem after that uh, what is happening that we will start uh,